you're listening to Guides for Brides, the wedding podcast. I'm Amelia. And I'm Nikita. And we're so excited to discuss all things weddings with you. Yes, we'll be covering trends, practical planning tips and more. And of course, we'll have a few special guests along the way. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Hello again. Welcome back to another episode of Guides for Brides, the wedding podcast. Hello, everyone. We hope that you're keeping safe and well out there. Yes, and uh, first of all, we just want to say a quick thank you to those of you who have been listening and have subscribed to the podcast so far. Um, We've just really appreciated your wonderful feedback. Yes, thank you so much for all your messages and your reviews. We really do appreciate you taking the time to, to send those. And we're happy to say that we're now taking episode suggestions. So if there's something specific that you'd like us to cover or you want to suggest um, an episode idea, just drop us an email, info at guidesforbrides.co.uk. And um, to make it stand out, just pop the word podcast in the subject line. Great, so on to today's episode. Today we're going to be looking at the key suppliers that you'll need to consider for your wedding, along with a general planning timeline as well. Yep, we'll be covering things like who to book, when to book, and the key tasks that you're probably going to need to tick off your list along the way. Yes, and we'll be starting this planning timeline from about the 12 to 18 month marks. Now, obviously everyone's planning scale is different, Um, I started planning my wedding as soon as I got engaged, uh, which was eight months before my big day. So for me, this timescale was condensed quite a lot. Um, But it's not unheard of for couples to plan, you know, two, three years in advance. So it is different for everyone. Yeah, so don't feel like there is a right or wrong timescale. This is just a little guide for you to keep um, an idea of what you need to be planning and kind of when um, in terms of timeline. Um, As always, there'll be loads of useful resources to help you with your planning timeline in the show notes. So as you mentioned a moment ago, we'll be starting this timeline at the 12 to 18 month mark. So at this very first moment of your planning timeline, you'll want to get those big tasks tick off first. And we're thinking about this as like a wedding cake. If you were to build up and decorate a wedding cake, you wouldn't start with that top tier. You, If you start with the top tier, the whole thing's just going to end up collapsing. So you do need to make sure you start with the big tier, the big base, and all of those basic tasks that have to fill that up before to, to support the rest of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, those basic tasks would be things like working out what your budget is, a rough idea of your guest numbers, Um, What type of ceremony that you want for your wedding? You know, do you want uh, a church wedding? Do you want an outdoor ceremony? Do you want to get married abroad? And just kind of what event that you want for your day? Because until you know all of these things, you can't build the rest of those things up on top of it. Exactly. And I mean, those first initial decisions, um, as we've previously discussed in our last episode with Sam, um, it means that but as soon as you know that, you can start looking for the big things like the wedding venue and start booking your main suppliers. So after you've decided on your budget, your guest numbers, your ceremony type, and the kind of event you want overall, do you want a marquee wedding at home? Do you want a registry office ceremony with a, a small guest list and a massive party at a restaurant later? What do you want for your wedding? And then you can go about choosing the venue. And as soon as you've got the venue, you can get wedding insurance if you can get wedding insurance. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, so, you know, all of these tasks will be at that 12 to 18th month mark. These are the very first things that you need to get done. The very first important decisions. Exactly, yeah. And then once you've got your venue, then you can book those suppliers that, you know, the ones that are on the day that might only be able to do one wedding a day or you know, might be limited in terms of time. Um, If there's a particular supplier that you really love and have fallen in love with, get in touch with them at this point to make sure that no one else books them up. Yeah, absolutely. The best suppliers always get booked up quickly. Just remember that. Yeah, they do. If if you want this top photographer and you've seen their work and you really, really want them for your wedding, inquire as soon as you know your wedding date so that you can actually get them secured. So it's it's worth being as organised as you possibly can be in these first initial moments. Yeah, absolutely. 
so what we'll do now is we'll just quickly run through all of the different suppliers that you could have for your wedding. Obviously, this is all going to be budget dependent and dependent on um, the kind of wedding you want. If you want something very simple um, and, and basic, then, you know, you probably won't want all of these suppliers. And it's absolutely up to you. Yeah, I only had like half of these suppliers at my wedding, so... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely something... It's worth considering all of them, um, but everyone's going to be different. So just take this bit with a pinch of salt. If you don't necessarily... You, you don't have to have all of these suppliers. So we'll start off with um, two of the ones that generally get booked up pretty quickly, I would say. These, these first two on the list, so the photographer yeah. and the videographer. Yeah, I mean, these two do get booked up so quickly and obviously they're going to be there for your entire wedding day so you know it's not like they're gonna be there for half the day and then go off and do another wedding so yeah. if you want them there you need to book them yes exactly and then next on this list we've got a wedding planner now you might not want a wedding planner for your um, day itself you might just want someone to sort of tag team and um, to help you plan those big big things but if you find if especially if you are not that organized of a person um you can afford to to ask someone else to assist you with this ask a professional to assist you with the planning um, and handle all of those tough conversations for you it might be worth considering hiring a wedding planner um of course wedding planners aren't always um there for the whole whole planning process you you might just want someone to coordinate your day for you and help make sure everything runs smoothly on the day and that's it that's absolutely fine but it's worth considering if that's what you want um but also consider if it's what you need yeah and i mean they definitely help reduce that stress of 100 you know not only just actually planning your wedding but on the day as well so that you can just enjoy it and you know that everything's being taken care of in the background yeah they'll, they'll be they'll be doing all of that for you won't they yeah <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll be doing all the stress stressful things for you you won't have to worry that your bridesmaids have, have put all the um the order of ceremonies on the chairs in the in the church you know yeah. you you won't need to worry about that the wedding planner will have yeah. that sorted for you so if that's something that you you can do we would recommend investigating it sure so the next supplier you want to think about is the person who's going to lead your ceremony. So whether you choose to have a celebrant-led ceremony, um, if there's somewhere particular special that you want to get married, like your place of worship, um, or if you want to book a civil ceremony, in which case you'll need to book a registrar. So it's completely up to you what type of ceremony that you want um, and who you'll need to book for that. Yes, and when you're booking the person that's going to officiate your ceremony, it's kind of imperative to know the kind of ceremony you're wanting, um, and also whether you care about that ceremony being legally binding on the day or not. So um, it's important to mention that each country in the UK has different wedding rules. So for example, in England, if you're wanting a civil ceremony, you'll need to get married um, in a civil ceremony licensed venue with a registrar. So that's one example. Um, but also there is the option of having a celebrant-led ceremony. Now, the rules differ slightly um, in Scotland and Northern Ireland, whereas in England and Wales, if you want to have your civil ceremony, you'll need to be in a, a licensed venue. But in Scotland and Northern Ireland, it's the person officiating the ceremony that's licensed and not the venue. So you may be able to find that you can have a ceremony uh, led by a celebrant um, that is still legally binding. So it's worth investigating depending on where you're getting married. Now, I don't mean to say that you, you can't have a ceremony led by a celebrant um, if you're in England and Wales, because these are very personalised ceremonies and completely like personalised to your relationship. And they're beautiful and there's so many amazing rituals that they do. Um, and so if you're wanting that ceremony to be legally binding, you know, maybe you can consider getting married in a civil ceremony licensed venue with a registrar present and have most of the ceremony led by your celebrant. Um, or you can have a celebrant led ceremony wherever you want to get married um, and then have your legally binding bit done later at a registry office or at your church or wherever you're going. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what I did. Um, we had our legal wedding at a registry office on a Tuesday morning. I think it was like 10 o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. Because it was one of the cheap ones. It was about £45 to do it. So we were like, why not? 
Mm. Um, and then we had our actual wedding day on the Sunday. It was a licensed venue as well, so but we wanted a religious ceremony there. Um, and obviously you can't do that. Um, yeah. So we we essentially, our minister married us. And for us, it felt like the legal ceremony, even though it wasn't, yeah. and that we'd already done that. But it was such a special day. And like, you know, none of your guests there will, will know that it's not legally binding. Exactly. If you don't want your guests to know that that ceremony is not the legally binding ceremony, just tell the person that's officiating. <laughs> like they'll be <laughs> able they'll be able to make it seem as though it is. Um, you know, people don't tend to know word by word from word <laughs> what a legally binding ceremony has to say. Um, but we should mention that at the time of this recording, there is a review of the law going on in England and Wales. So we may in the future see it moving towards um, the efficient being licensed and not the venue. So we'll have to we'll have to see where that goes. And then next, we've got your wedding transport. So, you know, you might actually be staying at the venue the night before, so you might not need wedding transport. But if you do... Um, is a good idea to get this booked in uh, sooner rather than later as well. Yeah, it's worth it's worth considering um, what kind of transport you need as well. So if you are having a church wedding and you've got a little bit of a drive to um, the reception venue, do you need to get like a double decker bus for your for your guests? Is, is that something you're going to need to book? Um, do do your do you or your partner um, or your bridal party require some very fancy transport to the venue? Like this is where you consider that. (laughs) (laughs) It's totally up to you. If that, if this is how you're, it's just organising it. It's just getting all of that sorted. The next thing on the list, caterers. So you know, your caterer is going to be pretty important. (laughs) (laughs) Feed your guests. (laughs) Yeah, you can't have a wedding with no food. It's just not going to go down well. (laughs) So if you are needing external caterers, you know, think about that that they're they're likely to only be able to do one wedding a day um, unless they're a massive catering company um they'll probably will only have one one event a day um so if there is a particular type of cuisine that you want or if you're looking for a particular caterer you'll want to get those booked in as soon as possible and then of course one of the uh most important ones is your florist um if you're having a florist of course um now you can leave your florist a bit later on in the planning but if you're going to be having quite a lot of florals at your wedding um especially any like big floral pieces like if you want a floral arch um mm, cause something think, that's going to be a lot of work yeah i mean if you're if you're florist you want you're wanting them to do your bouquets your buttonholes table centerpieces mm. um maybe there's a nice staircase at your venue that you want you know decorated you want a flower arch you know that's going to be a lot of work for them and they do need to be booked in sooner rather than later so that they can prepare for that yeah absolutely and I mean I guess it goes back to the first point of the more work that needs to be done yeah the sooner you should get them booked in especially like with a photographer they're going to be there for the whole day um a florist working on that much work is probably only going to have capacity if they're on their own to do your one wedding so yep. just bear that in mind um if you're only having a few bouquets if that's if that's your style if you're going very very simple you might not need to rush for that booking but you know the sooner you can get stuff booked in the less stress you have at the end of the day marquees so if you are having a wedding in a, re- uh, a rent my field t- style venue um, or at home in a back garden, you're probably going to need a marquee. But there's also other suppliers that are associated with this type of um, style wedding and you want to consider them as well. So a good marquee company will be able to tell you exactly what you need. Um, but this generally includes things like portaloos and generators, something that you might not necessarily have considered. So speak to if you're having a marquee wedding, speak to your marquee company and ask them what else you're going to have to book in um, for your style wedding that you're having. Obviously, if you're having a wedding at a venue that has a marquee attached, you might not need to worry about these things. Um, but it's worth just double checking because you'll want to make sure A, that they're budgeted for and B, that you book them in. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, and and oh, don't forget your flaws as well, like Sam oh, said God, in our yeah. previous episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sam made a really good point. You need your marquee flaws. Yeah. And then your next supplier would be your cake maker, so the person that's making your wedding cake. Now, you might want to make your own wedding cake, that's fine. Um, if you do want your cake professionally made, usually at this point you'll want to get in touch with that person. Um you know, there's actually quite a lot to consider for your wedding cake because, first of all, you need to actually find someone that you want to do your cake. Then you're going to be discussing, you know, your styles of cake that you want, flavours, decorations. It can take a while to actually kind of pull together the vision of what you want for your wedding cake. Yeah, and it will take time to sort of discuss those ideas with your partner as well because and we we know of a few who a uh, few wedding cake suppliers that are um that have adapted their services because of covid and they are now sending out boxes of wedding cake tasters for oh, couples wonderful. to sit down. Yeah, I know. I'm, can we I'm get like some? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please can I have some? Um yeah, so they they're now sending out wedding cake taster boxes. Now, you know, they'll have to make those cakes, they'll then have to send them to you, then you'll have to taste them and make the decision. And I mean, yes, there's going to be a, a sort of time limit in terms of things going stale and things like that. But how how fast is that process going to be? So, you know, if, if a wedding cake is very important to you, again, get it secured, get it booked in, the sooner you have stuff organised, the better. And then I guess your next supply would be your wedding music and entertainment. So um you know whether you want a band or a dj or both even um yeah yeah you know um if photo you want booth, a photo magician. booth yeah um dance floors and things you know all of this is your would be for your um evening reception um and also some of these companies can also help you with venue decor as well yeah um, lighting and sort of sound yeah. for that for for your venue yeah, so it's definitely worth getting in touch with those um, as soon as you've booked your venue. Um, I mean, your your wedding venue might even have recommended suppliers that they already work with and that come in to do that venue. So, you know, they actually might be able to help you as soon as you book your venue there. And they might say, oh, well, you know, we usually use so-and-so. And then you can go and book them. And that's that's great because they, they already know the venue. They already know the venue. So they'll be able to tell you... A, what they can do and B, what they usually do. And if you don't like what they usually do, what are the alternatives? (laughs) So, yeah, the sooner, again, I keep saying it, but the sooner you book it, the better. Because, you know, there's going to, it's just think about the stress and just think about how much less stress you're going to have when you've got everything you need to book booked in and then things just start to flow. This is why this base tier is there, because as soon as you've got that done, you know, it's just a step-by-step thing. Yeah, it's like downhill from there. Yeah. Well, in, in a good way, in a good yeah. way. So the next thing is a Toastmaster. Now, not a lot of couples actually consider a Toastmaster. Um, this is someone that can actually help you on the day as well. So the Toastmasters are usually like a master of ceremonies for you. Um, they can sort of help you keep your guest organised. For example, if you're having your wedding photos, the Toastmaster can announce to everyone that it's time to go in for the wedding breakfast. And they can make sure everyone's in on time, ready for you to make your big entrance with your, your new husband or wife. Um, and that, that would be really, really great for you to have someone controlling the day for you so that you don't have to stress about it um yeah really useful yeah they they are super useful and they always look fantastic can i just add like a lot <laughs> of them wear these amazing red suits and they they're spotted out in a crowd it's great um <laughs> the it also takes a lot of pressure off your wedding party so we've mentioned in a previous episode um about your wedding party roles and communicating that with um your chosen wedding party a Toastmaster can actually take the stress away from them as well. So if you, for example, have got a bridesmaid that is in, in charge of making sure everyone is present for the group photos, the Toastmaster can assist them with that role. And um, it might be that your bridesmaid knows who everyone is, but the Toastmaster can go up and ask them to come in for the photo. So, you know, they can work together in a bit of a tag team there. Definitely, yeah. Um, And the next one is your hair and makeup artist. Now, again, this is something that you do want to book in as soon as possible. I mean, you can leave it nearer to the wedding, 
But, you know, as we've just been saying, the sooner you get all these things done, you just feel so much more relaxed with your planning. Yeah, and I think it's important to say as well that, you know, again, as we've said, you don't need all of these supplies if that's not what you want to have. But as soon as you have the ones that you do want on a list and you know how much you're paying them, you know, you can start getting your finances sort of planned out as well. And it just takes that stress away. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, with hair and makeup, you know, I actually did my own, um, my own makeup for the wedding. But I had a hairstylist come and do my hair because I wasn't going to try and put that on. <laughs> I am terrible with my hair and makeup. <laughs> I, I act like such a girly girl and I'm just awful at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be needing a hair and makeup artist for my wedding day, personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but when I had my... Um, or I found a hairstylist that I really loved. Um, and, you know, I went to go book a, a hair trial with her. And it was really great, and I came away. And then when I got back, right, I had a, a mull over it, and I had some photos that I'd taken of my hair. And then I kind of decided, actually, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted to make mm. a few changes. And then, so I went back to her, and, you know, we ended up changing it slightly, so actually it was what I wanted. So, you know, some of these things, if you do book them in sooner rather than later you've got more time to, you know, make changes if you want to make changes and just try different things until you're completely happy with with what you want. Yeah, absolutely. And there's nothing worse than just regretting that decision. Like, you don't want to be on your wedding day regretting a decision you've made just because, you know, you could have asked your hairstylist if you can have a second trial because, you know, you had time to. Like, this this is the benefit of being organised because you have more time to mull things over, more time to consider, more time to prepare for payment. Yeah, Um, yeah. And that's that's the best best way forward. It's it's like I I look at my wedding photos and I'm like, why didn't I try out that colour nail polish before my wedding day? I left it too soon and then it's too late to change your mind then on what you want, so... Yeah, and you don't want to have to compromise on what you want. So it's, you know, it's helpful to be organised. Um, the next thing we've got on here, and I think it's the last on our list, is a professional decor or furniture hire. Um, now this may be an optional, this may be a requirement for you. It depends on the, A, the kind of venue you've booked, um, the kind of style your wedding you go for. Um, but if, for example, you're booking a marquee, you may need to hire out tables, cutlery, uh, furniture, um, lighting, loads of things, you know. So... Just be aware that if you've gone for like a a very DIY venue, you might require some some professional assistance or um, needing to hire different things to make to build that wedding day. Or or even if you are at, you know, a venue and you want to swap out their chairs for like some Chivari chairs or something, Mm. you know, you'll need to do that sooner because they'll need to know that they've got those reserved ready for your wedding day in case, you know, someone else nabs them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you don't you don't want to find out that you've actually, you actually, you go to your venue and you go, oh, I really don't like those chairs. And, you know, what you don't want to do is ha- last minute having to phone around different furniture hire places because they don't have the 80 chairs that you need. Like, it's it's just... Considering these big things right at the beginning is just so helpful. And, you know, your venue will be there to assist you on that. So do say to them, like, I'm not so keen on these chairs. Um, Do you have a decor hire or a furniture furniture company or a decor hire place that you you usually work with? Or do you have a supplier that um, can assist me with this change? Um, And they will probably be able to recommend someone to you. But, of course, if they can't, Guys for Brides has got loads of listings on there, <laughs> great professionals. Um, and it's the same for all of them. If, you, if you're if you looking for any of these suppliers, just head over to guysforbrides.co.uk and you can have a look at their listings. So now moving on to the next tier on our wedding cake, and that is the nine to 12 month mark before your wedding. Now, this is when we would kind of recommend thinking about the stationery, because at the very top of this end of the scale, so the 12 month mark, is when a lot of couples would start sending out their save the dates. Of course, of course, of course, of course, send them out sooner if you want to. Um, if you want to make sure that, you know, 
I don't know, you've got family overseas, um, you want to make sure that they are there for your big day, tell them when the date is as soon as possible, send out that save the date. Um, so, but when you send out your save the dates, you're going to want to consider the rest of your stationery. And that's what we recommend looking at at the nine to 12 month mark. Absolutely. Um, and we will be doing a future podcast all about your wedding stationery. So uh, you can keep an eye out for that in the future. So yeah, so once you've got your save the dates and your basic uh, wedding stationery bit sorted, then you'll want to start the most, well, probably the most fun part of your wedding planning. I would highly agree. Looking for your wedding dress. Yes, it just remember like wedding dresses take a while. Um and you know, most brides don't really start looking for their wedding dress or wedding attire maybe before the nine month mark, I would say is an average point. Um but again, the sooner you do it, the less stress you're gonna have and the more time you have to decide on the kind of dress you want. Yeah, and not just that, but like if you find a dress and you know maybe you found a really nice dress in a sample sale but it's the wrong size and it needs quite a lot of alterations like <coughs> Amelia. Me, that's what I did it's <laughs> <laughs> a really good deal <laughs> um you know then you do need to have more time for that so you know things like wedding dresses um you know if you're having bespoke menswear or bes- any bespoke clothing that needs to be made all of those things are going to have a long lead time. So you do need to make sure you've just got enough time to, yeah, you know, have yeah. all your fittings, have any alterations so that, you know, it's not like a week before your wedding, you're still having your final fittings and like you're panicking. Is it going to be ready in time? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is, that is pretty much all you need to do at the nine to 12 mar- month mark, really, um, aside from just securing any wedding supplies that you haven't managed to secure yet. Um, you know, as we said, we went through that whole list. But, you know, as we said, A, you don't have to have everything on, on that list. But B, the sooner you book them, the better. Um, and, you know, just worth bearing in mind with um, with COVID that, you know, Couples are postponing their weddings, so you you will likely need to be a bit more organised than you usually would be um, at this point, just just to make sure you're able to get the suppliers, the venue, etc. that you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so that's kind of it for the 9 to 12 month mark. So then the next tier of your wedding cake, um, I really like this wedding cake analogy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it makes it a lot easier to visualise. Yeah, and actually, I think if you are if you are out there right now and you're sitting down with your partner and you're starting to write notes, just imagine where all of those things sit on the tier. This, this is why we've come up with this tier analogy, because, um, you know, your time scales are going to be vastly different to any other couple out there. So, you know, use the tiers as something that will be able to assist you in planning out your planning. So the next one then would be nine to six months. Now, the finer details are going to be starting to happen at this point. So you've got your biggest base tier, you've got your second large layer, and now we're ready to start building up all the smaller pieces. Yeah, absolutely. And by this point, you'll need to have absolutely secured all of your suppliers um, and you'll likely be moving on to that personalization of your day, the really exciting bit that everyone looks forward to, the thing you look at to your Pinterest board for. This is where all the magic happens. Now you've got everything important secured. Absolutely. So you do want to, at this stage, organize um, all the rest of your wedding stationery. So, you know, your invites, um, your table plans, um, if you're having like a menu card or something at your, for your breakfast, whatever else that you want for your wedding stationery. And then you'll want to start booking some meetings with your suppliers to actually discuss with them, you know, what you want for your wedding day. You know, whether that's menu tastings with uh, your venue or if you've got a separate caterer. Um, and menu tastings are very fun. You can get a bit boozy as well. <laughs> Mine got a bit boozy. <laughs> And then you'll have your hair and makeup trials. Um, And as you know, as we said before, you do want to leave time for plenty of changes because like with your, um, your menu, you might have decided on 
okay, I th- with, we think we're going to go for this menu. But then when you have your menu tasting, you might think, actually, I prefer this. I want to change it to this. Um, you know, it might be included in a different package or something. So, yeah. so at this at this time, you do want to start booking those meetings. And just choosing, yeah, what, what, you, what you prefer. Absolutely. And um, I think that's nice, a nice point to move on to, you know, we said at the nine to 12 month mark, you should start looking for your wedding dress and any other attire that's got that long lead time. Now is the moment you need to have decided on this because, you know, when we get to that five month mark ish, sometimes it's the six month mark. That's when the timeline gets very tight for wedding dresses. So, you know, you, you're going to have limited options bef- uh, um after this point yeah you you need to say yes to the dress (laughs) yeah say yes to the dress again all the dresses have varying lead times um suits will have varying lead times you know if you're having something bespoke made it's going to have a varying lead time so just be very clear on what you want um and this is the point the nine to six month mark is where you make that decision and and you know all the other items of bridal wear can be left till much later on in the planning. Yeah, the accessories, the shoes. You know, if that's if it's something that you're not as concerned about, leave it till a bit later. But you know, the dress, the thing that's going to take the longest to get here, the longest to alter, that needs to be secured. And then finally, you'll start to want to look to book your honeymoon. Um, maybe you haven't actually decided where you'd like to go for your honeymoon yet. Um, so it's quite good just to you know, have a look at different places, see what you like. Absolutely. And this actually is a great moment to um, take a step back from the wedding planning. Yeah, definitely. If you're starting to get a little bit monotonous, that is, this is the time that you take a step back from the wedding planning and focus on something else, focus on the honeymoon. Yeah. And, you know, you might want to get in touch with a travel consultant to help you plan things. They can often get uh, much better deals than you can find online. And then once you've actually booked your honeymoon, you'll need to obviously book time off work, not just for your honeymoon, but for the wedding. And you might even want to take, you know, like the week off before your wedding just to have time to, you know, have all your beauty treatments, just relax and and get ready to look forward to the big day. Absolutely. If you're if you are working for a company that, you know, requires a bit of notice to get time off work, and I know that a lot of people will be in that boat, you know, just get it secured as soon as you possibly can. Um, because you don't you don't want to have to compromise on the time off you have before your wedding or for your honeymoon. So, you know, get that sorted. So now we're moving on to that top tier, the six to three month mark. And you'll see why we're going to call it the top tier in a few moments. But here is the final bit of proper, you know, organisation that you need to get done. So first things first, you know, this might be the moment and, you know, some couples leave this a lot later. But if you are wanting to be organised this is where this is the point where you start considering what your wedding party are going to wear if you haven't found that already. So um, if you are needing to hire suits for groomsmen um, or needing to buy some bridesmaids dresses, this is the point in time when you start looking for those. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you do decide to start doing that a bit earlier, actually you give yourself more opportunity to find, you know, you might find dresses in the sale or something. Whereas if you're leaving it nearer to the time, you know, you might be limited by choice. And obviously your bridal party, well, your wedding party will need to try things on and, Mm. you know, they might need to send things back and have a bit of backwards and forwards. So if you can do it at this six to three month mark, then, you know, that's really good. Yeah, absolutely. And then you kind of need to ensure everyone's on the same page. So this, in terms of all the things you've already booked, you're going to want to make sure that all your plans are sort of in line with everyone else. So, you know, this is the opportunity maybe to visit your venue again, measure up with your venue stylist if you're having one, um, book in your rehearsal time, um, your rehearsal dinner. This is this is the moment where you sort of get the plans ready to finalise. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, part of that would probably include um, if you're having a photographer, videographer, you know, actually arranging for for them to come and visit the venue, whether that's, you know, on their own or, or with you. And it's quite nice for them because especially if they haven't been to that venue before, they can have a look around, 
they can work out, you know, the best spots to take photos, you know, like if it might rain. Yeah, where can you have your photos if it's going to rain? So that's quite good to try and get them to visit the venue um, if you can. Yeah, and um, and I think it should be said that towards the end of this six to nine month period is traditionally when couples would send their invitations. Of course, if you want to be super organised, send them sooner. Um, but, you know, traditionally, this is kind of the point in which that would be sent. And start any new beauty routines at this point. You know, if you're desperate to have your legs waxed before your wedding and you've never had your legs waxed before, don't leave it two weeks before the wedding <laughs> to oh, have your legs waxed no. for the first time. <laughs> please don't leave it that, that soon. You know, yeah. if you are going to have any new beauty routines, any new treatments, any new products. Yeah, could you imagine imagine having an allergic reaction to something on your wedding oh, day? Oh, God, disaster. It would be awful. So, yeah, please <laughs> leave, <laughs> leave enough time to try out new things. And Yeah, if you're having a new facial, <laughs> if you're having a new facial, um having your legs waxed for the first time whatever it is <laughs> a new hair color you know yeah give yeah. yourself time yeah i mean just have you in seen case. in that um is it bride wars where one of them gets their hair yes. dyed blue yeah. and i mean i know that was sabotage and, but you know <laughs> and the orange fake tan as well <laughs> oh god no don't we don't want these disasters like no, a we week really before don't. your wedding <laughs> <laughs> okay. so now we're getting to the quite fine details now um this time will be probably about the three to one month mark before your wedding and these would be your so these are the small details but these would be the bigger small details so if you like on this wedding cake they'd be like the sugar flowers right the yeah, the bigger things yeah. on the cake you know we're starting to finalize things now for your wedding day so you'll need to make sure that your wedding menu is finalised. Guest numbers, so you'll want to start getting some RSVPs from people. Deciding on your flowers, colour schemes, cake flavours. Um, just start making those decisions, especially if there's something that you've been, you know, umming and ahhing over. Yeah, now you need to be strict with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, time is limited at this stage. You need to just make those decisions. And stick to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and stick to them. Um, and three months before your wedding, again, you'll need to make sure you're on the same page um, with everyone involved. So, you know, at this point, check in with your suppliers. Is everything looking good? Have we all got the same date still in the book? You know, is is everything looking good and feeling good at this point? This would be the moment again. Check in with your venue. It's just just a quick check in. Make sure everything that you want is is ready. Yeah, just make sure that you're happy with with everything. And you know, if people, if you've got suppliers dropping things off the day before, you know, again, these are things that you just want to liaise with them to make sure that you are on the same page and that yeah. they know what you're expecting from them. Absolutely. And then most couples that are around this point would probably be having their hen and stag dues. You know. Probably not you organising it. However, you might want to tell um, whoever is organising it that they need. This is the kind of the moment where you'd want to have it. Some, I mean, some couples still have their hen and stag do's the night before their wedding. Did you have that? <laughs> uh, no, definitely didn't. No, I had. I had a friend who had her fiance, no husband, had his stag do the night before the wedding, and of course they were all hung over on the day of the wedding oh, and she was really annoyed um <laughs> so no I think we had as I think a couple of weeks before the wedding and I guess also it depends you know who you actually want there because if you've got friends that live overseas or you know actually you know they might be coming over especially for the wedding in which case you might want to have your henos tag do a bit closer to the wedding so you know again these timelines are just rough um yeah. so you don't need to think oh okay if i i shouldn't leave it so close to my wedding but you know it's completely up to you yeah uh, absolutely and at the three to one month mark again we're looking at the small but important details so sort out your table plan decide on what your tables are going to look like get that decision made final um confirm your order of service with your registrar with your vicar with uh, your celebrant whoever's leading your ceremony pick any songs you want on your wedding breakfast playlist you know these are the things that you can start looking at at this point um just because 
right at the beginning they weren't that important but now we're getting into the final moments and sort of making this all about you and personalizing it to the finer details this is where that becomes imperative to start looking at the smaller things absolutely like you know pick your first dance song um yeah. have a bit of a hope, practice hope, <laughs> hopefully you already know what you're walking down to the aisle to so yeah you know these are the things that you you want to get done at this point and absolutely and the, on that point as well if you're having live music you're gonna want your um your band or your singer or your string quartet whatever you're having to know what they're going to be playing yeah they um, need to organize their set list so yeah, yeah. absolutely get those song requests in <laughs> Um, so then we're going down to the four to two weeks now, uh, getting very close to the wedding day. Um, so these would be like the small details now. So if you've got any outstanding payments with your venue or supplier, just make sure that you are on track with those finances, um, that you are staying in communication with those people so they know what's you know what's left to be paid and when. Chase those RSVPs as well. If there's people that still haven't responded you need to, you know, pick up the phone and give them a call. and Yeah, make sure they're coming. Yeah, because you'll, you'll need to finalise numbers um, around this point for your, your venue. Obviously, every venue is different, um, and, and for your caterers, sorry. But, you know, every while every venue and catering team are different, you know, the four to two week mark is pretty much where they all need to kind of know what numbers they're going to be catering for because they'll need to place their orders in for food and they'll need to make sure they've got enough staff on for the day you know there there are certain things that they have to do well in advance for health and safety reasons as well that will require them to know the numbers so you know chase the rsvps as we said earlier hopefully you've trialed them by now but book in your beauty treatments um please please i beg you <laughs> do not get anything that you've never tried before <laughs> for your wedding please um so yeah that this is the point where you sort of book in those beauty treatments and and it's nice as well as you get closer to your wedding date and i don't know you might be feeling really nervous at this point you're like oh my goodness it's so close and it's quite a nice way to just book in all those appointments and actually have something else to look forward to that's like yeah. take a step away from the wedding planning mm. yeah um so that you can actually enjoy that week before your wedding. Also, just make sure that, you know, all the people in your bridal party are on the same page as you. At this stage, you might want to book in and have your rehearsal. So, you know, you want to rehearse your ceremony, obviously, and, you know, anything else that you're having at your wedding. Yeah. Call a team meeting, if you will. Call it a team meeting. Um, get everyone on a Zoom call however you're going to meet them if you're allowed to meet in person that's great but you know get everyone on a zoom call discuss what the roles are make sure everyone's on the same page um and as amelia said this is probably the point you you would have booked it a little while ago but this is the point where you're probably going to have your rehearsal um your rehearsal dinner your rehearsal ceremony yep definitely and then you know at this time you do want to then just finalise your numbers uh, with your venue and your caterers hopefully by now at least you know I mean, if it's two weeks before your wedding, you're still waiting for people to respond, you know, that's uh, mm. not great. But you should, you know, have responses from everyone. Talk to your venue and caterers and just confirm those numbers with them so that they know how many people are going to be at a wedding. You know, also any food intolerances, allergies, it's quite important to let them know Absolutely. Um, at the same time. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to your venue and catering teams as well, They'll, each contract will be different. So just, it might not be the four to two week mark, it might be the six week mark. So just make sure you know what your, your contracts are saying so that you can make sure you make those decisions at the right moment. So then, the the cake is done. Um, All we have yep. left to do now is put the topper on top of the cake. Yep. It's not a lot of work, the topper. It's just placing something on the very top of the cake. Yes, it's like the cherry on top. Just the final, final things. Like at this point, we're talking about maybe two weeks before the wedding. Just start start having those beauty treatments and just try and relax. You shouldn't, you shouldn't need, be needing to do a lot of stuff. 
before this like this should be the moment where you um pick up your stationery or you collect your wedding dress or you just just things that are like logistical that you've planned and it's all sorted and it's just actually you know, doing it go go shopping for your your wedding earrings or something yeah yeah absolutely like it's it's it, it shouldn't be more stress than you know finalizing what jewelry you're gonna wear on your wedding yeah. day and then you know have those beauty treatments that you've booked in just take some time away relax enjoy yourself and and get lots of sleep as well yeah get lots of sleep <laughs> Um, you probably won't sleep that well the night before your wedding. You'll probably be too excited. So just try and get in a lot of sleep so that it doesn't feel too much <laughs> on yeah, the big day. Definitely. And then, you know, a week before, you know, you might have booked time off work the week before or you might be working, but just try and breathe, have some me time, relax. You know, if you have been organised at this point and you've been making sure that, you know, You've got all these things done as soon as possible so that you're not leaving things to the last minute. There shouldn't really be too much to do at this point other than, yeah, just doing those final little details, you know, picking up your your wedding dress, etc. Yeah, and I mean, maybe if you're going on your honeymoon soon after your wedding, you can start packing for that. Like, yeah. If you're wanting to keep yourself busy. Yeah, it it should be a fun time. The, yes. the, you know, the week leading up to a wedding. And now we have reached the wedding day. <laughs> We've reached the big day. It's time eat to your eat cake. your wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> eat, eat that cake that you've been building. Um, let the stress go. Have an amazing day. Try to relax and be in the moment. It will be amazing. We promise. Absolutely. And any honestly, anything that goes wrong, you're gonna you're gonna laugh about later because it's it's gonna be absolutely fine. So don't let little things uh, get you stressed. Just chill. It's gonna be amazing. And and it will go quickly actually. Um. So yeah. just enjoy yourself and talk to people and you know, yeah, just have fun. Lap up the your compliments. <laughs> Lap. Don't, just uh, get, your bridesmaid, get your bridesmaids to ask people, don't you think this is a lovely venue? Wow, <laughs> look at the cake. <laughs> yeah, like just lap it up. Have an amazing day. This, this, is, this is your day. It's about you and your partner. So make sure you enjoy it. As we said right at the start, this was a very general timeline. But it should help you to organise yourself and figure out approximately where you should be currently in your organisation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I said at the start, I planned my wedding in eight months um, and it was stressful, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, but, you know, everything worked out. and It was an amazing day in the end. Um, you know, especially if you're doing it on your own, the less time you have, the more stressful the planning process can be. Obviously if you've got a wedding planner to help you or your partner's just super organised, then that's great. Um, And a lot of that stress can be taken away. Yeah, definitely. It's just all about being organised, isn't it? I think that's the key word in this. Just be organised. I think we'd probably both recommend just taking some time with your partner to actually plan out your wedding planning, um, whether you use our recommendation of, an, of a like a wedding cake analogy to, to plan out your planning. Um, just look at how much time you've got left. What else needs doing? What are the priority tasks? Remember, the big things need to be done first before the smaller things. Yeah, absolutely. Just just remember that wedding cake analogy for your planning process. Those big tasks need to be done first because they're the basis of your entire day. Um, and once you've got those big things sorted, then you can start looking at the smaller details and building up the cake that is your wedding day. Absolutely. Well, we hope you found this episode helpful and that you'll find it a little bit easier to plan out your wedding planning. Yep. And as always, the show notes will be full of resources that are going to help you with this task. So go and check those out. Um, And you can also follow us on social media too, if you haven't already. Um, That's at Guides for Brides. Thanks for listening today. And don't forget to subscribe so that our next episode lands straight in your library. Um, It's a very exciting episode. We're going to be talking all about wedding dresses with the amazing Ellie Sanderson. (laughs) I look forward to it. I'm so excited. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we'll chat to you again in a couple of weeks. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.